Hey guys, good morning, Laura with Garden Answer. It is 6.45 a.m. August 29th, and the day has finally arrived. We are getting all of the arborvitas planted. So I kind of wanted to recap this whole west side of our house and everything we've had done. I know we've shared little snippets throughout the spring and summer. It's been quite the process to get this whole spot ready. So let's go this way, and I will kind of give you a, I totally couldn't think of the right word, but a summary. So a summary of what happened in this area. First of all, there was a great big elm tree in this spot that we really wanted to have taken out because it was old and diseased and it kept dropping really big branches out of it. So we had a really great tree service come out and remove it for us. And underneath that tree, there was also a 40 plus year old concrete weir, which is an old irrigation access that was no longer operational. So we found someone with a backhoe to come help us remove it and it was massive. The same guy who helped us take that weir out also helped us level the garden area and he did a fantastic job. I'm so excited for this area. I've got all my raised beds in the barn ready to go. Um, I wanna put a little picket fence around this spot and really just make it cute. And I'm just, like I can't believe the day has actually arrived. Once we get these arborvitas in, we can start planning this area. The last thing we have to do, oh, I forgot to mention too, we had to have all of our water lines removed, which was not on the, that was not in the plans. Um, we went out and dug a hole to test, you know, where we wanted to plant the arborvitas. Of course, that is exactly where our sprinkler lines ran and they were only six inches beneath the surface of the soil. So that would not do. Um, I needed the arbs at a specific location. Uh, I couldn't have them, you know, I can't plant them right on top of a six inch PVC pipe. I mean, the brew balls are this big. So we had to have this side of the house retrenched. So you can see all of the trenches right here. They'll fill in really quickly. There's another one that goes um, from about, well, I'll show you. So we have this trench right here that had to run to the house where our water starts, which it had just all been trenched up for our electrical. So it's kind of in chaos around here, but it's all good. And I'm actually glad we had to do all of this at the same time because, you know, you may as well make a mess all at the same time, get it all right. In fact, um, because we had to come from the house, we were able to run more live water than we thought. So we were able to add a faucet, which right there, you can see the white stub right up there in the garden. This is its own dedicated drip just for the garden area. And that's all I thought I was gonna have, but we were able to run this as well. So if I ever want to, you know, if I need a hose out here for any reason, which I'm sure I'll need it, like I'm sure I'll have pots out here, this is gonna be nice. And we have the same thing down at the very end because we will probably landscape that end next season. All right, so as far as the arborvitas go, this is where they're all going. We had to have all the sod removed from this location right here, all the way to the fence, so a five foot kind of swatch here. And then Aaron and I came through with landscape fabric and we tucked it in, I mean, as far to the neighbor's property as we can. So, and then after we were done with the landscape fabric, we ran this like green string, which we're gonna have to redo we did this last night um, because we want to plant the arborvitas two feet out. And I know some of you guys asked some questions about landscape fabric and what I thought of it. And I do think that there's definitely some room for landscape fabric. I don't use it in my normal flower garden because I like things to spread and naturalize. In an area like this where I'm planting a hedge, it's kind of off to the side. I do not want to be dealing with weeds. I will use landscape fabric. I think it's better than chemically controlling weeds. Um, this is a DeWitt Pro is the brand. It's the best landscape fabric that's out there. I mean, nothing makes, makes it through this landscape fabric. But if it's in an area like where I want to plant annuals or I want to like continually change things up, I wouldn't put landscape fabric down. So the very last step to all of these things that we've done is having the arbs actually planted. And I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of it because as you guys know, I am pregnant um, and I don't think I should probably be digging 65 holes and carrying around 65 big evergreens. So we have a couple of young men coming over this morning. Um, I'm gonna be out here helping them. Um, we're gonna cut X's in the fabric, make holes, dig holes, get the arbs planted. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in just a little while. I'll show you the amendments we're putting in the soil to kind of help things get started. And I forgot to show you that we have a dedicated drip zone for our arborvitas so we can really control the amount of water here in Eastern Oregon. Arborvitas are a little bit tough to get going and get established. So we really wanted to make sure that we could give them the right amount of water. And also I've been carrying this around. This is my spacer. This is my scientific way of spacing the trees. 
I put this in between the plant cans and then I know that they'll all be equally spaced. It's a really easy way to do it. So the guys got here to start digging the holes and I just wanted to show you what they're having to go through. So in this area, like I said, the old water line just ran about what, like six, seven inches right below the surface of the soil. Um, so our new water line is running about five feet that way. So everything's good. We just abandoned this line. So bless their hearts, cutting through all this stuff. Okay, so you can see that we have our two foot marker from the fence right here. And then this is what I'm using to space the cans. So this just goes right in between. So I know right where the next one needs to be planted. Okay, so then to cut my hole in the landscape fabric, I just kind of gauge where the middle of the pot is there and move it off to the side, punch a hole with my scissors. And then I just cut a big giant X. Then we fold the flaps under. Like that. And that's where we dig the hole. And then when we're all done, we've got the plant already planted in the ground, then we take these flaps and put them right back up to the trunk like that. And I don't tack them back down. We just put mulch over them and it keeps them down really nicely. So we're making pretty good progress. If you look down that way, you can see how many that we've got planted. And these guys are lapping me. They are so fast. <laughs> I'm moving really slow, getting you know one planted here or there, and they're just rolling. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what um, I'm putting in each of the holes, uh, because here we've got pretty heavy clay soil. Um, it's really high pH, so I do have to do some amending in order for things to really thrive. So the first thing I put in is some starter fertilizer using the Biotone from uh, Espoma. I don't measure, I just give it a good handful like that. And then right here, I've got some pelletized gypsum and I have this in huge bags. I think it actually Espoma has it in five pound bags if you've got a smaller yard, but I go through it by the 50 pound bag. Um, so this is what it looks like. And then I just take some of this same way and dump it in the bottom. Gypsum is what helps break up that heavy clay and it helps condition the soil and bring the pH down. But the thing about gypsum that you need to know is that it's not once and done. So it takes a buildup of that in the soil in order to start to take effect. So it can take all the way up, you know, one to two seasons of you continually applying it to the soil for it to start working. So it's one of those things that just takes some consistency and perseverance to see the um, fruits of your labor, but it really does work. At our old house, when we very first moved in, I could dig a hole about this far and then it turned gray, like hard pan gray, and it smelled anaerobic and um, swampy. I started applying the gypsum and I did it about two to three times a season just in my broadcast spreader. It took about two to three seasons, but then eventually I could dig down this far and it was dark crumbly and I had earthworms, which I didn't have before. So it really does work. And then I'm gonna mix in a little bit of planting compost. This one is Whitney Farms. Kind of like that. And then I'm just gonna mix it all together. And that just provides a really nice base and a really good start for your plant's root system. So I already took this Arborvita out of its pot and you can see that it is a little bit root bound. When you look in there, there's not a whole lot of roots, uh, loose soil. The roots are really thick. Um, typically, you don't have to worry about breaking the root memory unless it looks like this, which means it's been in its pot for a little bit too long. In fact, it was a little bit hard to hydrate because um, it was so root bound. So I was watering these constantly to keep them happy. So what I'm gonna do is just take my clippers and make a few little cuts, like every six inches or so around the base of the root ball. And that's usually sufficient. And then I'm just gonna take the bottom like that. It's pretty much all I do. It doesn't take much uh, and that'll keep it happy. So put it in a hole. Now I have to stand back and make sure it's straight. I never get it right the first time. Oh, look. This is probably the one I found in my hair yesterday. <laughs> How cool. I put him somewhere safe. Out of the way. Actually, that looks pretty good. That's pretty straight. And then I'm just gonna take some native soil and backfill around the root ball, making sure to pack it in really tightly because we do not want any air pockets in there. So you can see I've got it planted now. I've got the soil packed in really tightly and the root ball of the plant is just slightly underneath the soil. So it's kind of all one level. 
Then I take my landscape fabric flaps like this and just tuck them right back in toward the trunk. And we are gonna be cleaning all this dirt off. So we're gonna be removing this, um, taking it elsewhere. Then I'll be hosing off the landscape fabric before we mulch so that we don't you know, create a nice bed for weeds to grow. So I don't think I mentioned at the beginning of this video that these are called North Pole Arborvitas. We did a video specifically about this variety last fall. We planted five, uh, five of them behind our greenhouse. I um, they actually fared the winter fairly well. I mean, we had a super hard winter. I couldn't get to them and I saw that the snow had just like bent them over almost to the ground and they just bounced right back and they're hanging in there. They're doing pretty good. So I'm really hopeful about these right here. And so if you want to know a little bit more like details about this plant, we will link that video down below. But just in short, the reason why I chose this variety is because one, I like the look of them. I like the, how soft they are. I like the smell. Um, I also like the size, so I don't have very much depth in this area until our driveway starts. Um, so I wanted something that didn't take up an enormous amount of space, which is kind of hard to find with an evergreen. So these ones grow about three to five feet wide, which is amazing. Um, typically you don't have to do any pruning on them. Uh, and they'll grow about 10 to 15 feet tall, which is perfect because I really just want these to grow together and just be a nice green wall. We are going to be planting fairly heavily right in front of them. So I kind of in the end want them to disappear, but I like the fact that they'll be evergreen so that in the winter time, we still have that nice wall, that nice barrier for wind and really just to make our garden private and more cozy feeling. They're also a zone three through seven. So they're a really tough evergreen. Um, but they do need a cold period. So if you live in a zone above a seven, I'm sorry, but this is probably not the plant for you. So we just have nine more to plant and then the guys are gonna work on getting the dirt removed. We're gonna run some drip and then we are going to mulch and then we will be done. I'm so excited. Okay guys, so all of the arborvitas are finally in the ground. So they start right down this way. And I kind of want to explain my plans for the end here because I know it looks weird that I stopped the hedge before the end of the fence. Um, but the land right here is pretty sloped, so I think it's going to actually be a great spot to do a sunken garden. I'm actually not sure if that's what we're going to end up doing, but that's the thought right now. And the reason why I stopped right here is because of this pole, which we can't do anything with. Um, so there are three poles right here. They're on the exterior of our property. They don't, you know, we can't do anything with them. So I want to start heavily landscaping this area. And like I said, maybe like cut down right here, cut down and then scrape all this stuff out to where it's level with this area down here, and then create some kind of neat rock wall with some stairs that come down into this area, but have some really big deciduous trees and evergreens. I wanna put a big blue spruce like right here um, so that it grows up taller than this pole so that it's always masked so we don't have to see it when we drive in. We don't normally see it from this way because there's another globe willow that kind of blocks it. And then I just want to start a mixed hedge because I didn't really want this hedge right here of arborvitas to look like it abruptly stopped, you know? I want it to kind of like gradually turn into mixed plantings of uh, blue spruce, some pines maybe, some bigger deciduous trees, some shrubs and perennials and stuff like that. So it looks like a really gentle transition into this area here. So that's why I stopped it here. And you can see that we didn't quite get all the mulch done. Let's go down this way so I can show you what part we did get all the way done. So we got it done, completely done, to this point right here. Um, we didn't have as many drip emitters as we thought we did, and the place that carries them closes early on Saturdays. So we have to wait till Monday to go buy more emitters so we can finish the drip system on the arbs, which is not a big deal. That's just a couple days away. Um, so we've got drips on this arborvita right here, all the way down toward the greenhouse. So let me show you. So we've got a main drip tube right here. And then see right here how we've just kind of punched into it. When we have two emitters, they're two gallon per hour emitters on each arb. So if we ran the drip system, it would get four gallons per hour, which might be overkill. Um, but these arborvitas are on their very own zone. So we can give them as much or as little water as we want. And typically arbs in our area want a little bit more water because it gets just so darn hot. So again, we put two emitters in, one on each side of the root ball. And then also I wanted to talk about the type of mulch that we used here because usually we use a planting compost, but I didn't really want to invest in compost, like really nice bagged compost for this since I'm using landscape fabric, because usually my thought is when I mulch with planting compost, all of those goodies can make it down in the soil and they enrich your soil and make your plants happy. 
But in this case, it's just sitting on top of a landscape fabric. Is there a barrier there? It's not making its way to the soil. So we just went with the bagged brown mulch. It's just like a brown bark mulch, which is fine too. It looks really pretty, I think. And it was a little bit less expensive to go that route. And we have to go the whole way down this fence. So I don't know, this is 25 bags to this point here. So I think we're gonna probably need 50 more bags to get it done, I think. So yeah, the less expensive option was kind of alluring to me on this, uh, in this project. And I think it still looks really nice. And then right at the very end, it transitions from bark to gravel right by the greenhouse. This right here will be the edge of our garden. So uh, there will be a picket fence right in here. And then I will probably cut out a little more and do some flowers and things around the picket, the base of the picket fence. And then this area will be a whole different video. So excited because we are just one step closer to actually getting our vegetable garden in. I might even have time to grow maybe some greens or some really fun fall crops. But I'll show you the gravel area here. And you can see the trench all the way down the lawn from where we had to have the new water line put in, which it'll fill in eventually with grass. But see, didn't that turn out just so nice and tidy? I'm so excited. So like I said earlier, the North Pole Arborvita only gets about three to five feet wide. So we gave them ample amount of room to grow. They're spaced about four feet apart um, <clears throat> so that they will make a hedge. I wanted to make sure I spaced them close enough to where they would kind of reach each other and kind of blend in together because I do want it to be a wall. So if you guys are looking for a really good option for a like narrow area that you want a privacy screen or maybe like a wind block or what, you know, just something pretty that maybe masks something ugly. Maybe you have an ugly fence or a pump house that doesn't belong to you. <laughs> maybe you want to mask something like that. This is a really good option that doesn't take up an enormous amount of space. And that was really important to me because I did not want to cut into my vegetable garden space. I want to have as much room as possible to grow some veggies in there. So I think that this is going to turn into a really beautiful hedge. So I hope you guys are excited to see these arborvitas go in as I am. I know we've been talking about it for months. We picked these up five months ago and we've been hand watering them every single day until today. So I am just thrilled to have them in the ground. I just feel like it's a huge check mark off of my project list for this summer. Um, I was super thankful to have some help here today. I was able to take it really easy go inside when I got too hot um, and not have to do all of that really hard physical labor. I did plant right alongside them, but I was a lot slower. <laughs> Those young boys just, I mean, they did a really good job. I'm really happy with it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.